Hey now, America. It's your favorite podcast host, Greg Fitzsimmons. There's a lot of us out there, but it's a, it's amazing. Year after year, I seem to be the best one. Um, just back. I, Jesus Christ. I was just watching. I had a really good weekend at the La Jolla Comedy Store, which is just a fucking tight, fun little room. It's been there for 45 years. And I had a bunch of new stuff and I was just, I really felt like, man, I am good at this. I am killing. And whenever I feel like that, I put on that Bernie Mac video where he comes out at, uh, at the Apollo and he, I parent the backstory is Martin Lawrence was just out there. He used to host it and he was getting annihilated. The crowd was unruly. They were out of control and so Bernie Mac's coming out. It's his first time doing the show. He's been this, you know, Bernie Mac was this comic who struggled for years. He, you know, he was in the trenches. He worked as a janitor. He was a coach. He was a bus driver. I remember hearing him in an interview talk about all the different jobs he did. Married his high school sweetheart and was struggling. And this was going to be his big break. And he walks out in front of this unruly crowd and he just goes, I ain't scared of you motherfuckers. And then proceeds to do a six-minute set that will live on in infamy. Will be one of the sets people talk about forever. And like 30 seconds and he says, kick it! And they play music and he does this little dance. And he, I mean, it was just so fucking ballsy. It's like, if you no, you have not killed. That's killing. That is what it is to annihilate a crowd. And I have to remind myself that sometimes um, he he was he was incredible, and maybe you feel like what you did was killing, but um, no, that's killing. I hear a lot of young comics in the green room go, "Yeah, I crushed. I was over those. I crushed. You didn't crush. Talk to me when you've been doing it for ten years. Then you crushed. Nobody crushes for a long time. I guess Chappelle probably did." Um, hi, welcome to the Bitter Old Comedian Podcast. I just got a, had a birthday this past week, and I got a really nice message. It was a video from Weird Al Yankovic. Is it Yankovic or Yankovic? I think it's Vic. Anyway, I'm on like a few mailing lists that, that he's on. You know, some group chats that go out that he's on as well as I. I've never met the guy in my life. Always respected him. Always thought he was funny. And all of a sudden, I get this uh, video. Happy birthday to Greg. Happy 56th birthday to Greg and him singing it to me. It was very weird. And it wasn't from somebody else. It was from his email address, the one that I see him on on these chains. It was from his personal email address to me singing this song with a high production value. It's really like surreal. I don't I don't know what it is or who did it or how, why, me? Weird Al? Anyway, maybe I'll try to get him on the podcast. That would be a lot of fun. Chris Hardwick loves that guy. A lot of comics, a lot of the uh, the nerdy comics love Weird Al. He was a he was a, uh, a hip to be square guy way before everybody else was. And I was at the speaking of the um, comedy store. I was at the fiftieth anniversary of the comedy store party on Thursday night, which was wild. I had a crazy well, I had a crazy week. I guess I should go in order. So I started out. I had my birthday on Tuesday and. It was just such a great day. I got, I get, my wife gave me breakfast in bed. That's the tradition in this family, breakfast in bed. And then I went off and I played golf with my boys, uh, with Matt Malloy and Mike Gibbons, two of my best friends in the world. And I shot three under par, which is the best I've ever played maybe in my life. And I was, it was a beautiful day and we had a lot of laughs. And then uh, we had a party that night at the house. And it was the Irish Mafia. I had a bunch of friends. We're on a text thread called the Irish Mafia because it, they were all there. The whole Irish Mafia showed up for my birthday. It was uh, Fitzsimmons, Fitzgibbon, Gubbin, Gibbons, Fitzgerald, 
Malloy, Donovan. Uh, it's fucking crazy. Uh, and, and just all great storytellers, all ball busters. Everybody brings something to the party. And we, we stayed up late, had an amazing time. It was a great birthday. No, no card from the kids, no gift from the kids. I guess that doesn't work that way. I guess you pay for college. I guess you fly out to see them in Chicago and you drive up to see them and, uh, and, and there's no present or card. That's how that works. Not bitter. I doubt very much I sent my parents Christmas cards or birthday cards and presents. I doubt it. But I'm a better parent than my parents were. Let's just put it that way. So they should be better kids than I was a better kid, than I was a good kid. So anyway, so I had the birthday, and then the next day I flew to Austin, and I did Rogan's podcast on Thursday. I got there Wednesday, spent the night. Rogan flies me in first class, Four Seasons Hotel, per diem, treats you like a star. And, 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 and so I get in a night early, so I go down to this club called The Vulcan, which is on, is it 6th Street? Whatever their crazy street is, that's where uh, the club is. And I didn't realize that that day on the podcast was Shane Gillis and Ari Shafir and Mark Norman who come on together sometimes. And so they came in, and so there was a stand-up show at the Vulcan, and Tony Hinchcliffe came down. So it was like a great, great hang in the green room. Uh, Gillis had... I believe he drank over 20 beers that day. He had 15 on the show, and then he probably had a, he probably had a case of beer. And wasn't fucked up. Didn't seem fucked up. He's a big dude, but he's a funny motherfucker. We had a blast. And, um, and then I got up the next day and did Rogan's podcast. I was, uh, it, it was just me and him, three hours and 45 minutes. It went by like, it felt like an hour. I, I looked at his watch at one point, and I saw that we'd been on for three hours and three and a half hours, and I was like, "That's his watch is fucked up. That's not possible." And we we had a lot of laughs, good hang. We didn't get a chance to shoot pool afterwards because I was leaving to go. I got on a flight after the interview and got back to L.A. in time to get to the um, comedy store party, which was amazing. It was like uh, all these comics, old time comics, the new comics. The regulars, everybody together, and they, they opened up the back parking lot and they put in bars. They had a band inside. They had decorations. It was all beautifully done. They did an amazing job and a ton of people, almost all comics. It was some industry, but they, they kind of said, why is it if you're in the industry, do, do you have to wear a suit all the time? Is it like a uniform for an away game? Do you have to wear a fucking suit? Um, so they, they stuck out like a sore thumb, but I saw a lot, you know, hung out, uh, with some fun people, stayed out until three o'clock in the morning, which is unusual for me. That's late for me. Very late. And some landmines, there was some dudes there that were drunk. They, everybody was drunk and high. It was crazy. It was open bar and some, there was this one comic, I'm not going to say his name, but he's this comic that, uh. He's been around a while and he was drunk. And I guess, I guess he and I had a beef like, I'm telling you, 15 years ago, maybe 12 years ago, like we had a beef at, at a club and it had to do with an, an, like an intro. Uh, and, and this guy starts going, hey, you fucking, you fucking mad at me? You think I'm an asshole? I was like, no, honestly, A, I don't remember your last name. And B, I have not thought about that incident once. Clearly it's eating you up. So you should let go of it and not make an ass of yourself at an otherwise fun party. He wouldn't let it go. I got, I got fucking pinned down for like five minutes. It was the most brutal five minutes of my life. And, uh, but there was, there was a couple people like that, but I would say 99% was just positive energy and fun and uh, happy birthday to the comedy store. 50 years. What a history. And then I left the next morning. I went down to um, La Jolla to do the comedy store in La Jolla with Erica Rhodes, who, if you haven't seen, is a really great comic. I bring her out to feature for me on the road a lot, and she's just terrific. I think she's she's going to be on the podcast in a couple weeks. I just sat down with her, and we're going to air that. 
Um, and what else happened at the party? Um, Adam Egan was there, who used to book the club for years and now is out running uh, Rogan's Club once it opens. He's out there for that. Annie Letterman was there. She had a nip slip. I saw her nipple. There was like the pot. There's the pot area outside where everybody, like all these people were smoking pot for like seven hours straight. It looked like an opium den. They were like slumped against the wall, giggling, just like 20 people, the potheads. And then the drunks were all in like, there's a, there's a comedian bar that they were all in. Oh my God. Um, so anyway, La Jolla was fun. Very white, extremely white town. Everybody's fit and Republican and they, and they, but they, but the shows are great because you can make fun of them for it. And, and I spent the weekend doing those shows in front of those people and watching the masters golf tournament on TV. I feel, I felt so white by the end of the weekend. Cause you, you watch golf, you're watching a group of men who were all, not all. I mean, obviously there's tiger, but 99% of them were raised rich as country club kids, that's how they got so good at golf. And now you're like cheering them on against each other. And it just feels, feels a little bit like, uh, haven't they already won? Aren't they all winners already? Do they need a green jacket also? And Rory McIlroy had a great final round. That was exciting. That was fun to watch. He was like eight under for the day on the last round. But they're mostly douchebags. It's a lot of douchebags. But I like watching golf. It relaxes me. Um, I want to thank, uh, I want to give a shout out and a thank you to Kyle Spencer, who's a guy who does, he's been doing a lot of my banners. I don't know if you noticed the quality of my my banners advertising my upcoming shows on social media. He's been doing those, so thank you. And if I got some shows coming up. I'll be in the uh, Spokane Comedy Club this weekend, April 14th through 16th. New Orleans, coming to New Orleans, The Howlin' Wolf on April 21st. Next night, I'm in Lafayette, Louisiana. Then I'll be in Plainville, Massachusetts at the casino there, April 23rd. Denver Comedy Works, my second favorite club in the country, April 28th through the 30th. And then also coming to the Tacoma Comedy Club, Irvine Improv, Bakersfield, place called The Well all those coming up in May. So go to fitzdog.com. Get some tickets. Come say hello. I love seeing your faces out there. And we also want to talk about your mental health, which I talk about on this show a lot. And I say, take the matters into your own hands. Um, get involved. And, you know, people are having physical manifestations of bad mental health. You know, the stress from the pandemic and coming out of the pandemic and life in general. People have uh, trouble sleeping, digestive issues, teeth grinding, headaches. Uh, don't let these things uh, ruin your life. Get involved with BetterHelp.com. Uh, I started working with BetterHelp about two years ago when the pandemic started. I got uh, I, I started with one person who I didn't jibe with, so I switched, which was literally a click of my mouse away. BetterHelp matches you with somebody based on a questionnaire that you fill out, so you get somebody who's got the expertise in what your needs are. So I was perfectly matched with the second person and been with her for two years, and uh, great progress. As you can tell, listen to how happy I am now. I never get stressed now. Everything's perfect. Uh, but really, I mean, a lot of people are, are, are dealing with stress and um, it's time to take care of yourself. Just do a little bit of therapy. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, or even live chat sessions with your therapist. You don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's your choice. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy. You can be matched up with a therapist in less than 48 hours. Give it a try. See if online therapy can help lower your stress. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and Fitzdog Radio listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash Fitzdog. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash Fitzdog. Okay, listen. Listen. Uh, we, got, uh, we got another ad here. I'm fighting an ape, and he's got a baseball cap and a gold tooth. That's the dream I keep having because people won't shut up about NFTs, and I'm over it. 
It takes up all the headlines that could be telling me about actual news I need to invest in. Although through all the noise, I saw something that blew my mind. It was a startup that had just gotten valued at a billion dollars that enables people to invest in real art, actual paintings from masters, Picasso, Basquiat, Banksy. It's a platform called Masterworks. They buy paintings and offer their members the ability to purchase shares of them. That way you can diversify your portfolio at a price point that works for you. We reached out to Masterworks, and now our listeners can get VIP access to skip their wait list. Just go to masterworks.io and use promo code FITSDOG. Again, that's masterworks.io, promo code FITSDOG. See important regulation a, uh, disclosures at masterworks.io slash CD. All right. Let's get to it. Speaking of the Comedy Store, my guest today is, uh, she is like wallpaper at the Comedy Store. She is always there. She does spots there every night. One of the workingest comics at the store. Uh, and also a big headliner on her own right on the road. She's been working with Dice Clay for two decades. And she's been on a ton of stuff on TV. She was a, a, a we didn't talk about this, but she was also um, a roller. What do you call it when you're when you go in a roller rink and you knock each other down? What is that? <laughs> you know, uh, like rollerball, like the movie Rollerball. Uh, anyway, she did that professionally, and she was in the Women of Wrestling. She was on. Uh, she did a special. Bill Burr produced her special, The Ringers, and she was uh, on Entourage, the store documentary. She's a lot in that. She's been on Rogan, Diaz, Mark Maron, Bobby Lee, Spade, all those shows. Um, but she's just a real comic. She's she's a, a trenches comic, hustling, digging it out, um, and uh, she's from South Philly, which comes up because it's all she fucking talks about. And she's the she's one of ten kids, and she's just really interesting and really fun. And here's my chat with Eleanor Kerrigan. Well, I'd like to welcome my guest right now. She's sitting in a Las Vegas hotel room, covered. <laughs> Covered in shame. I don't know what kind of made in South Philly t-shirt, which is that a brag or is that an explanation? Uh, it's an explanation and a brag. Yeah. It's a double. It has double meaning. Yeah. So it is a brag. How dare you? Well, I mean, my partner on my Sunday paper show has this thing about Philly. I fucking love Philly. I really do. Do you I really? Love yeah, I love the people. And 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 I'm not just saying this because you're on the podcast, but I love I think you are, but I like it. No, I love Philly women. I love Jersey women. They're they're loud, they're funny, they're Catholic, they're either Irish, they're either Irish or Italian. And uh and you can count on them in the crowd to be a good a good part of the show. Yeah. So what does your partner say? He fucking hates Philly. <laughs> He's afraid of it. Where's he from? He's from New York. That's why. Yeah. He's afraid of us. Yeah. He can't stand us. Yeah. Is he married? He's divorced. That's why. I'm yeah. kidding. <laughs> That's so mean. He's got a, no, I mean, he. But was he, she an East Coaster? Was she a loud mouth? He was a New Yorker. Was she, he, she was a okay. New Yorker. I think it's just, um, might have to do with the sports. Like, I grew up a Rangers fan, and the Flyers and the Rangers had that Ooh. crazy um, yeah, 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 rivalry. Yeah. Um, I remember during a rain, I went to a, a Rangers game with my dad. He worked in radio and his station covered the Rangers. So we used to get free tickets to all the games. Wow. Yeah. That's and, impressive. And the flyers were playing the Rangers and they fucking jumped into the crowd. <laughs> a guy climbed over the box because somebody in the crowd threw something at him. You know, uh, we have a, I have a crazy uh, flyer story. Cause I grew up like a mile from the stadium the, yeah. the why can't i think spectrum yeah uh they played in the spectrum back then right. i'm old whatever it's the broad street bullies uh my mom a die hard flyers fan die hard broad street bullies you know 
big Bobby Clark, Bernie, those are her yeah, guys. Right. She loves them. On the other side of it, she's at home with 10 children. <laughs> her husband works at, owns a typewriter store. Yeah. So we don't have a lot of money. There's no extra tickets. No. You know, no. <laughs> nobody's throwing us tickets for a typewriter. Right. Um, <laughs> there's Wait, no big exchange. One thing? Pull your hair back on your right side because it's hitting your microphone. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's better. Oh, okay. you just want to see it all. That's I get it. it. I Show get me the it. magic. <laughs> I didn't realize they were that uh, small. Mediocre. Yeah. Wow. Um, anyway, I should have put a push up bra on. Let me put it this way. Let me, let me adjust. Let me adjust. Uh, anyway. So, so yeah. So my mom, big diehard fan. It's a blizzard outside. I believe they're playing St. Louis. Now I'm really young at this point, but, uh, my mom's got all 10 of us and my dad was in the, uh, I'm working late again, honey. Stage. Oh shit. Those crazy typewriter guys. You know, That's they the pulled life. in. You yep. wouldn't think. <laughs> hunting, <laughs> With, hunting and poking. They're always hunting right, yeah, and yeah. poking. They got big fingers, very strong. Yeah. Very strong home keyed fingers. Uh -huh. Right. So you would think with their dirty hands, they wouldn't get laid as much. But, yeah. you know, Pops was pulling them in. So yeah. they were going through it. Right. And there's a blizzard outside. She's stuck in the house, 10 kids, chaos. On the radio, they said, if you can get to the stadium, they will let to the spectrum, they will let you in oh, for shit. free. Wow. With no, uh, you know, they give out hot dogs and I think it was like hot chocolate or something. Sounds like and my, my main shows on Friday. <laughs> Show up. Let you in. Just show up, guys. I'll bring the hot <laughs> dogs. I got hot chocolate. I'll feed you. I'll wipe yeah. your chin. Yeah. So she she was she just looked around. She was like, wrap them up. She put us on a sled. No she shit. Pulled us. You couldn't get out of the door barely. Yeah. We were walking. It's only a mile, but you know, at one point we lost my brother Billy in a snow drift. I'm like, Hey, <laughs> Hey, Hey, <laughs> asshole. You're going to blow our one hockey game. I'm like, you're ruining it. You're ruining it. We're out. We're out. Like, <laughs> we saw our dog. We, our dog popped up. She looked like a, she looked like a snowman. She was yeah. covered. She's a sheep and poodle, but she used to walk the neighborhood. Yeah. You remember like back when they didn't really like, where's the leash? The dog was just out. Well, you when know? you got 10 kids, I got to think that, mean, that dog's got to get fed outside the house. There's that's no right. Food for him at home. Yeah. He's got to figure it out. We yeah. all figured it out. So do you, yeah. you want to hang out? Figure it out, <laughs> fuck nut. Like, <laughs> and she dog. did. Yeah. She, <laughs> be a dog for Christ's sake. She did. She she would be out. So we, but I go, my God, look at that dog. I went, oh shit, that's fluffy. Like we, <laughs> <laughs> so we go to the, um, we go to the game. I, I, the only thing I remember is Bobby Clark. Cause I, I might've been three or four. Bobby Clark checking this guy up against the glass and his nose just bleeding blood everywhere. Yeah. And my little brother, I'm my, and my older brother, he's a year older, Billy like looked at him and he was like, and he just sat back like, Ugh. and then Bobby Clark kind of smiled yeah. at my brother <laughs> and let the guy go. Like, Oh, sorry. <laughs> we didn't know it was going to be, there was 20 people in that spectrum. No shit. I see Nobody was see. in there. So you're right up against it's the glass. Amazing. Wow. Amazing. That's something awesome. a typewriter repair kid could yeah. never get. <laughs> Wait, so it was what's amazing. With, what's with your mom having all those kids? With it's, I mean, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Wait That's... a minute. Wait. She's I mean, Irish Catholic. But I mean, my mom was Irish Catholic, but you know, I would assume, I would hope she aborted a couple of my siblings. You, you know, just to you keep know. It. Keep us eating well, you know? We fight about this all the time, man. My mom, I'm like, you couldn't have just cut off a couple. <laughs> you couldn't have just said, you know what? Yeah. He's not the best guy to procreate with. 
Right. You just can't. And she, so she goes, well, I was, we were relent. You were supposed to have children. And I go, what about birth control? And she goes, I use the rhythm method. And I was like, what are you, Janet Jackson? How much rhythm do you have? <laughs> Jesus. And she was like, we didn't do that kind of thing. I'm like, but your friends only have two kids, yeah. you know? Uh, so Three it wasn't like the whole kids. neighborhood had 10 kids. You guys were you were it was free. sporadic, but yeah. her, no, her sister, my, my aunt Joy has 10 kids too. Okay. Wow. So we're a tribe. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. A, she well, that helps. It. That helps when you want somebody to get your back when you're in school, nobody's going to fuck of course. with you. You've got 10 cousins and 10 siblings. Well, you got to, if you fight one, you got to fight the whole family. Right. So you pick and choose your battles. Right. And we did have like the Duffy's, the, the Gallagher's, um, they all have big families too. Right. They had 11. So yeah. we were like, Ugh, you couldn't yeah. go one more. You yeah, know? Right, right. Right. It's yeah. not a competition. Yeah. And then there was Italian families that were big. Like the Jafaglione's had six. There was most of my neighborhood was Italian. Yeah. Did you right. grow up? You grew up uh, in an uh, Irish neighborhood. Irish. Well, no, it was um, mixed. Yeah, I, I grew up in Tarrytown, which is like a factory town. Uh, I was born in the Bronx. I lived there for the first oh, like, okay. six years. And that was a very Irish and Italian neighborhood, Throgsneck. And then Ooh. we lived in Tarrytown, which is a factory town. So we had everybody, like every type of Latino, Black, uh, Polish, Italian, yeah. Irish. Not a lot of Jews. Very few Jews. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They didn't hang out with us. I don't know. I don't know what it was. I, <laughs> like, I can name the Jews in my town on one hand. And, uh, yeah. I, I said that to my mom. I go, how come we don't have a lot of Jewish people in the neighborhood? She goes, what do you think Rosie and Murray are? And I was like, oh. the shoe, the people that own the shoe store? Like, it's yeah. one couple. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right. Um, so what are you doing in Vegas? You're such a comedy whore. I'm not We've in Vegas. To- I am you? a comedy. I'm in Tampa. Oh, you were in Vegas on Friday, right? Last- no, Phoenix. But I like that you listen and follow. Jesus Christ. That, well, it's hard to follow. Gorgeous isn't cool. everything. You When's have the last to time think you turned sometimes. Down a gig? Have you ever, have you ever <laughs> said no to something? <laughs> I'm like Snoop Dogg. I say yes to everything. <laughs> I'm the same way. It's ridiculous. me and Snoop. Yeah, we'll yeah. be there. No problem. Yeah. Wait, so you just where get are you paid now? more. I'm at Tampa's. I'm doing side splitters. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and such next a fun week, club. I've never done it, so I'm excited. I've heard great stories. Yeah, you're gonna love it. And there's a uh, there's a girl from my neighborhood. There's a girl from Throg's Neck who who waits tables there. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. Italian nice oh no no she's irish she's irish yeah no don't don't get that mixed up she grew up five houses down from where i lived oh wow yeah um so do you still have family there um i don't know that we have any in the bronx they're mostly in i mean everyone's dead now my cousins have wow everyone's Mm -hmm. in the tri-state area like mostly westchester county new york uh some in long island uh, okay. a couple in Jersey, um, yeah. DC. My mom's still in the row home we grew up in. No shit. How many bedrooms? Two and a half. <laughs> <laughs> they keep saying it's three. I'm like, listen, this is not three. This is a glorified closet. How yeah. dare you? Yeah. So being, <laughs> I've been around now. Of, being, being naked in front of people oh. was something you got very used to. Very used to. Yeah. My brothers can draw it from memory <laughs> and vice versa. Hopefully just from memory. <laughs> Hopefully not in putting shit on Instagram of you. You want to see Nancy? You want to you... Nancy, you motherfucker. Yeah. Oh my God. Do you Everybody get calls me Nancy Kerrigan. Yeah. I'm like, I don't cry. Also, I don't get beat up. She's from Massachusetts. That's yeah. what happens to them. Yeah. I'm just did you, uh, uh, how many fights do you think you got in growing up? Like physical wow. all out fights? Wow. Um, how many? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like was some it a people regular kept thing? records. Some people kept records. <laughs> yes. It was a regular thing. Yeah. It was, I have these friends every once in a while because never, nobody left really in my neighborhood. Like, yeah. I mean, my family. A few neighborhood people are still there, but like my brothers and sisters either live up the street or around the corner, like yeah. two moved to the suburbs and 
my one nephew plays for the twins. So he's not around as much. Oh, that's but right. The, yeah. You tell me that. Yeah. On the off season, he goes back to South Philly and trains those kids. Yeah. Like, you know, kind of give back and it's great. He gets to work out on top of training younger kids, uh-huh. you know? Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so everybody's still there. So I never have to go spread myself out to find family. It's just right. all right there. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. I, now I forgot what we were talking about. Cause I'm old and we're oh, we were about talking where about family lives. No, it was something else, but I lost it now. See what happened? Cause I got sidetracked. So you must do well in Philly. Do you, you play, uh, what no, we do, do you play in Philly? Uh, I do great. Um, I do helium. I've done punchline a bunch of times. Um, we were going to do a show on Eagles, uh, on the field. It was got canceled because it was during COVID. Oh, but it was it wasn't it was last year, and then that stupid Omicron came back. The Abercrombie so, Finch strain. Yes, yeah. yes, and I don't like their clothes, so no, I said no, I'm not. But it was me, Big J Okerson, Annie Letterman, um, Toure, like all these Philly comics and it was going to be great. I was so excited, Simone. I was so excited. And then it got canceled because of the new strand, the Amber Cumbria and Finch, whatever. Wait, you were going to be at the, at the stand. We were going to do it. Yeah. We were going to do it on the field and just have people not obviously not in the stands, but it'd be 5,000 seats. They could fill around the floor. Wow. Oh, we were so excited. I mean, we were having like crazy meetings over. I was so we were all, it was all gung ho. The Eagles yeah. were behind it. Make people yeah. laugh, get people out. Right, right. Um, make people feel comfortable coming out. And then they're like, there's a new strand. And we're yeah. like, oh, fuck you. So that's, so uh, well, you'll we do didn't it. do it. You'll do but it another yeah. Time. Hopefully it comes back, but that, that would have been awesome to get to do uh, all that. I don't know. I got and, excited. And you could still trying call, to, you should put out a call to, to the, like your neighborhood in South Philly that, It'll be oh, like that, that hockey game. Like you guys can all come out for free if you're from my neighborhood. Well, here's the thing. It's funny because I got a local write up in the South Philly review. People are like, there's not a such thing as a, re- a review. I'm like, it's a review. It's like a chronicle. It's a paper. It's a neighborhood paper. And it still goes out. And I got my brother, Tommy, got me um, an, an, inter- an interview or something that I had done one a while ago. But this time I was headlining and the Eagles thing was going to happen. Yeah. So I did the interview, but the Eagles thing got canceled. <laughs> so we cut out that part and then we added my album came out. So okay. we, we switched it to just use that. And I'm on the cover of this paper. I'm so excited. This is all in my neighborhood. Yeah. My whole family's still there. We yeah. basically still run shit, you know. Yeah, uh, that's all. Awesome. <laughs> oh, we were talking about fighting. That's what it was. Yeah. How many fights? Oh, how many fights? So, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. See, we're both old. Good. And so, um, <laughs> so I was so excited, and I was going to call my mom and say, "Hey, open the review today," you know. And I call her. I go, "Mom, open the review." She goes, "Oh, honey, I threw that out." <laughs> I said, "What?" She goes, oh, Charlie throws it out as soon as it comes in. You didn't even look at it? No. I go, I'm on the cover. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> it's in the trash. <laughs> and they only and they only make like it's mostly on Every Thursday it comes yeah. out. Yeah. And she threw it away. Wow. I had to wait. I, I should have told her the night before. But that's how they're just like, oh, that paper. Oh, that thing. So how's your mom doing? How old is she? She's good. She's 84. Uh-huh. She's out of control. Speaking of fighting, I, I did get in a lot of fist fights. Yeah. Kind of bad. And there's a kid I was saying, there's a kid I know that I grew up with, a few kids I know that I still see. Right. And we were kind of, I don't know if you did this, but we did the blood brother thing. Like when we were, no, we didn't do that. <laughs> okay. yeah. I grew up. Yeah. We did. Yeah. <laughs> You know what? I came after it and we still did the blood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stupid. We don't, we're not educated is what we are. But yeah, but yeah we're going to bond. So there was a lot of fights and um, the boys would get in fights. And one time we were going to the movies and the boys were fighting. And one of them was my brother, Billy, and he was struggling. And I wanted to go to this movie. 
you know, it was the first time I had enough money to go to this stupid movie. And there's a boy I like, and we were going to the, and he was going to be there. So I'm like, let's go. And they're struggling. So I just went in, knocked the kid out and I go, let's fucking go. <laughs> and to this day, everybody talks that they're like, remember when you just knocked out Mikey? And I'm like, I want it to go. I like this boy. He's going to like me whether yeah. he likes it or not. <laughs> He did not like me. <laughs> well, maybe he found you a little aggressive at that point, but. A little. He was like, yeah, can I go to a different movie? Yeah. <laughs> so we did but, date a lot of guys. Like, I, I, it strikes me if you came from a Catholic I family, tried. you were probably a virgin until you were old, right? I, I, I did take longer than most, yeah. but um, no, I, we were, my mom's, they split up. So, you know, I, we kind of. Like when my parents split up, I was still afraid of my dad and he only moved a couple blocks away. Yeah. And I was afraid of my mom, but we did have a lot of like, I could have if I wanted to. Does that make sense? I mean, yeah. except for my brothers would show up. Yeah. Like there was a guy I was in love with on 12th and Wolf and he, they would show up to that corner and be like, get home, get home. And I'm like, you mother, like I went outside of the neighborhood. Yeah. To get ass and you're, yeah. and they would come and they would just yell out, get home. Yeah. Get home. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but they did it. They policed me, my yeah. brothers. Right. And right. so, so I did wait, but I did have a lot of boyfriends. I always, I was boy crazy. Yeah. That kid that I went to the movies with, he did not like me. Uh -huh. Um, so he was, that was like fourth or fifth grade. Um, and then, yeah, I had all these Mario's. I dated a lot of Mario's. It's yeah. uncomfortable. I used to talk about it, but <laughs> no, I would say that it's like, uh, it's like Italy fucked Ireland and Philly came out. That's well, I think, yeah, Philly is Italy too. Yeah. Because I'm a hundred percent Irish. Right. Yeah. And then my mom will go and a little English. I'm like, yeah, I know how rape works. Um, <laughs> She gets yeah, mad. And you're one percent and you're one percent <laughs> Mongolian because gang is that in there too. That's where I get my freak side. So uh so yeah, so a date wait, now you made me think of something else, right? Because my brain is just all over the place. But dating um the Mario's, what were you gonna say? So <laughs> when you died. so when you finally met a guy, was it a big deal to actually like have him come home? In your in yes. your house, yeah. Who was yes. the first guy you brought home? Mario. Oh, okay. The one guy that I was in love with at from another neighborhood, they thought I made him up. Yeah, like George Glass from the Brady Bunch, right, and I'm like, right. <laughs> no. I go, he's real, and then he was on the news. He got arrested, and my mother goes, Jesus, is that the guy? <laughs> no shit. And I was like, yes, yes, it is. That's him. And I love him. <laughs> and I love him, mom. <laughs> um, he's dead now. Anyway, uh, but yeah, so die? I, two in the back of the head, no normal. Shit, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn. Yeah, we had a lot of that in our neighborhood. Oh, uh, I'm, that's what I was saying. I'm Irish. So the Irish neighborhoods, right? Philly's pretty segregated to an extent. And the Irish neighborhoods bookend us. I was in the middle. So people were like, oh, you're Irish. You're from 2nd Street. No, no, I'm from 18th Street. Oh, you're Irish. You're from 30th Street. No, 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 18th Street. And they'd be like, but that's Italian. I'm like, what do you want me to do? I didn't yeah. pick the house. Yeah, yeah. I'm number eight. Uh -huh. She bought the house. Yeah. Fight her, you know. <laughs> but I'd go in the Irish neighborhoods and I'd get jumped for being Italian. And I'm like, what's oh, happening right no, now? No shit. Yeah, because I talk with my hands. As I should uh, sit on them. <laughs> yeah. Did, did uh and you must have gone to Catholic school then, right? St. Richard's, yeah. Did the, uh, All did 12 the nuns years. used to beat you? Well, uh my I remember and my they split up when I was eight, right? My parents. So seven or eight. So I remember being at school and the nun gave us a note. Just, if we're allowed to hit you know, the parents have to sign it if we're allowed to hit your children. 
And my mother signed it like she was signing. John Hancock. I was like, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so a ruler here or there happened. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But wow. they did ask permission. Wow. <laughs> and she did. My mom was like, please help. Did the, did the, uh, did the boys have to do the same thing for uh, being molested by the priest? Was there permission slip yeah, involved? Yeah, there was. And my mother signed it. Get them started. <laughs> Get them started. So I mean, where, where did you fall in the in the um, order with the 10th? I'm number eight. I'm at oh. the bottom. Yeah. Which kind of stunk. But I mean, it was the most fun because it's it's weird. Like we're all very close. Yeah. Oddly close. I'm I'm so uncomfortably close with my mother. People freak out. They're like, yeah. talk to your mother like that, like all the time. Yeah. Like it just would freak people out. Uh-huh. And moving to LA, everybody's like, oh, my mother abused me. You know, everybody yeah. hates their parents. Yeah. I'm like, um, I even talk to my dad still. And my dad's 86. He lives in Rehoboth. He's, you know, living the life. He married a wealthy woman. Oh, anyway, yeah. <laughs> not super wealthy, but, uh, you know, to us wealthy. Yeah. Did so, he pay child support? Not a nickel. Really? This is where me and my older sister bump heads because she goes, that is not true. That is not true. Because she, him and her are very, very close. Uh-huh. That is not true. He paid child support. I go, did he? She goes, he paid for Catholic school. That was mommy's rule. She wanted him to pay for you to go to Catholic school because public school was so bad in Philly that you had to go to Catholic school. I go, okay, then how come I was in the principal's office every, almost every other week that my bills weren't paid? Oh, they brought the, they shame the kid. They bring the kid Absolutely. in Absolutely. They put us in front of the room. Wow. They, me and my friend Ivy always complain about this because I hung out with the girls that were like me, you know, kind of fucked, poor, whatever. And we're still really tight to this very day, but it was just because they would pull us to the front of the room and be like, well, Kerrigan didn't pay her bill. Barrett didn't pay her bill. Curcio didn't pay her bill. And I was like, oh my God, this is crazy. Like you can't. And we would just be embarrassed. They did it all through even high school. Uh They took us, but in high school, my dad fixed their typewriters. So I could say, hey, <laughs> go talk to the typewriter repairman. <laughs> yeah. But here's what my mom, her crazy Irish, I don't know what the word is. She stubborn. She she was like, oh, you're not going to pay the bills. Give them to me then. Yeah. And she paid them. I'm like, yeah. that's not a solution, lady. Right, you right. just add it to your trauma, if you will. Yeah. So she had a regular job where she worked for the Philadelphia Navy shipyard. She worked nine to five. And then she had, she would work as a beer girl for the Eagles and Phillies on, on the seat during the season. And then she would work at like a straw bridges or, or a gimbals or everything that's closed now. Wanamakers. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's all Macy's and Nordstrom now. Right. Damn. So but if she's then, working all those jobs, who's making dinner and cleaning the house. Whoever's around. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We had more freedom. Uh, She made dinner still. She still came home and figured out this is why I say she wears a cape. She still like figured out how to come home, make dinner. And if she had to go to work, she would be like, you guys clean up. She put it out. Here's your dinner. You clean up, make sure you do your homework. You have to do this. She was still on us. Right. And she would just But every once in a while, if she couldn't make it, she would be like, I put a check. Make sure you bring it to Sam's because he will float it for me. And (laughs) this point, like we knew how to float checks. Yeah. And she would say, get a a pound of roast beef, get this, put it in the gravy, put it on the pot. Like, so we knew how to just survive, you know? Right, right. So me or Edie or sometimes Karen or Kathleen, my older sister's. Sometimes even my brothers would do it, cook, you know, Think about the executive skills that your mother possesses, Shh. that she could handle all of that. Think of what if Anything. she had been born, if she had been born in different circumstances where she'd gone into corporate America, she would have become a fucking CEO of a company. hundred percent, hundred percent. This woman was 
I literally, I, I call her my unsung hero. Like I, I just insane that people don't know more about yeah. people like this. Cause I know she's not alone, but she was incredible. And the fact that in our neighborhood, it wasn't great. I have two friends doing life in prison. One is a girl. And so we could have went anyway. I went to funerals from fourth grade steady yeah. till all the way until I moved. Right. It was steady. Right. dumb killings, killing each other, uh, to anything you could think of, right. anything you could think right. of. And, and it was just, it, it was brutal. Cause yeah. we learned from the streets. Yes. But we also got this amazing woman who was like, right there, like, don't fuck around. Right. Uh, you know, I, I remember there was a, a shooting that I kind of went no, I, I didn't kind of witness. I witnessed it. Like, I'm still afraid to say I kind of, yeah. <laughs> I'm still afraid to admit to it. Cause it was pretty bad. A shooting I witnessed and, um, the guy who shot everybody, his brother came around and he was like, nobody says a word. I don't, I forgot if you can curse on this. Is that bad? Yeah, of course you can curse. <laughs> I don't know. I never know. And so I'm like, I, I, I nobody says a fucking word. I know where you all live. Right. As he's saying this, my mom is coming home from work and she's walking up the steps and I'm like, mom, get in the house, get in the house. And she's like, what the hell is he yelling about? Because she sees them as little boys. Yeah. She don't pay attention to the fact that they're crazy now, you know, right. like she's, she, that's that little boy, Walter. Don't yeah. worry about Walter. He's not going to hurt you. Well, Walter's a psychopath. And yeah. he's literally like, you say anything, I'll put your family in a blender. And I'm like, wait, <laughs> what? So, <laughs> I get my mother in the house, you know? And, I, and my mother, don't worry about him. You know? And I'm just like, mom, just get in, get in. She goes, what happened? I go, nothing. And he goes, that's right. <laughs> wow. And there was one kid with me that was a gangster's, relative like a, a nephew but a huge gangster and so he go every time he was yelling at everybody he's like i know where you live i'll kill all of you it's not you and but i'll put your <laughs> mom <laughs> not you and every time he said something horrible he goes, not you and <laughs> we just keep dying but my mother just walked through it like yeah. not paying attention to those yeah. like, they're just crazy kids, you know, get in the house and then she yell at us. And, yeah. you know, I don't right. want you associating with this and this and this. And so it was, you had that. And then my brothers and sisters would be like, Hey, don't get involved with that. You know, cause they went through it all. So well, what's, they the, what's of, the most trouble one of your siblings got into? Uh, Jimmy in was getting caught. Jimmy would probably be the worst. And, um, in terms of getting caught, but he's also like the greatest person on the face of the planet. But uh -huh. he, uh, there was a said supposed robbery, um, that was, that took place and an even bigger one was going to take place. Uh -huh. And him and his best friend were on trial for those supposed Roberts. Right. Is that how you say it, Eleanor? Did I do it right? I think you, uh, <laughs> I think the statute of limitations is passed on that anyway. You can tell us that. He probably right. Yeah. Uh, and so um, his best friend and him did this thing heinous. I don't know if they did it, to be honest. I just remember uh, they were talking to a priest and I was like, oh, this is, this must be really bad. And the priest went and testified for them. Really? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. God bless you, Father. So I was like, wow. <laughs> See, they're not that's, all bad. They're not all that's bad. That's why my mom let them molest them, because <laughs> they did nice things. <laughs> right. They do nice things, Eleanor. You give them treats. You give them treats. <laughs> um, you know, you What's have to meet. a little poke? You have to meet my friend, Kate Flannery. Do you know Kate Flannery? Why do I know that name? She was on The Office. She was the yes, redhead. Yes, I did a show with her. Oh, you I did? I did a show called Stand Up in Stilettos. She's from Second Street. Yeah. She's from the Irish neighborhood. Right, yes. right, right. Yes. But her She's dad terrific. owned a bar in Philly, an Irish bar. And you guys, yeah, would, yeah you, I, I got to have... I'm going to have you guys over for dinner with my friend, Tom O'Neill, who's also from Philly. We'll have a Philly. Night. Let's do it. That'd yeah. be amazing. Um, she's yeah. great. What, she was hosting that show called Stand Up in Stilettos. And it was my very first um, 
time doing stand up on TV. Uh-huh. And she was, she made me so comfortable. When I yeah. found out where she was from, I was like, ah, great. Uh, and then we, cool. we talked and hung out and she was great. But then I never saw her again. Yeah. Well, <laughs> no, she's busy. She's, she's great. That well, no, no. Mm. Bombing in stilettos. Is that what it was called? Bombing in stilettos. Even if you look hot, you still are <laughs> shit. <laughs> It was, I did well. And it was taped at two in the afternoon. Oof. Oof. How awful. On Hollywood and Vine and the, what's that called? The TV Guide uh, channel. It was on the TV Guide network. Uh huh. I was like, isn't that a book? Yeah. This can't go well. Yeah. And, and I didn't know it was a channel. <laughs> so you did, uh, now what's the thing you did, Bill? There was a Bill Burr Presents The Ringers. Is that, is, was that Comedy Central or was that? Um, Comedy, Comedy Central? Central. Yeah. Yeah. So when was that? that so basically Bill Burr, I know he did one with uh, Ian Edwards. Uh, who he else? did a special for Ian. Uh, what, and what's the one you did? So I did, it was a bunch of different uh, people. It was uh-huh. the ringers and it's these people that never get a shot, basically. Right. right. That'd be me. Hey. And uh, <laughs> Rick Ingram was on it. Punky Johnson was on Like a lot of store people he used, yeah. which is good. You know, like um, we had so much fun, but I was that was taped downtown in a beautiful theater. Uh, and it was Bill's crowd. Uh So he would have, he did two nights and we went on only doing, I think between seven and eight minutes. Yeah. And then, um, he would go on at the end and run his hour. So it was great. It was like this, this crowd was incredible, you Uh know? And so we all did it that way. Then he went on, did his thing. Then we did an interview with him and it aired in, I think it was like four or five different episodes. So, you know, one week it would be this group of people that opened. And yeah. I think it was three, three, maybe it was like four episodes or something right. like that. Three on each. Right. And, uh, and then he did an interview and it was, it was cool. It came out right as we shut down. Everything's nice. working out for me. <laughs> yeah, I know. Jesus Christ. It's, uh, <laughs> I think we're out of it though. I feel good. I just I hope a bunch so. of dates for the spring and I feel like people are going to start showing up again because like, from December, January, February, it was like, it, it was hard to get people to come out. It, yeah. It, it, I was doing stand up through the whole pandemic. Cause they were like, who's willing to come out with a deadly virus yeah. for 30 people. Right. That's me. <laughs> yeah. I'm in. Yeah. I recorded an album during it. Oh, did you really? At uncle Vinny's in Jersey, uh, nice. point pleasant, point New Jersey, pleasant, New Jersey. Yeah. It's such a great little club and it's yeah. such a great little club community like they come out and support you Uh because they've seen me there with dice dino the owner has had me come headline a few times so they see me and they keep coming and they're great and so even during the pandemic we had a decent little crowd and i did the album and a fight broke out on the first night so i was like oh people they're not used to being outside yet okay (laughs) Did you use it on the album, the fight? Of course. Uh, it was a little chaotic. Yeah. And then the owner got involved. So we only left a little bit in. Uh-huh. But I left that uh, definitely from that bit because it was in the middle of a bit. And then you yeah. try to go back to it and you're like, this isn't working. All right. This isn't right, right. Isn't working. Yeah. So, and I just kept saying, I'm just going to go through this. And at one point, my sister Karen yells out like with a, a an uncomfortable laugh and i was like that's my sister and that's the laugh <laughs> before she loses it and fights this whole room <laughs> because she's out of control and she will hurt you she's had a, a probably a bottle of wine at this point you're and always she's now holding it and she broke it in half <laughs> yeah so you don't, she, you don't need security at your shows just your family no. shows up no, she did a great thing. Uh, when I first started doing stand up, Dice brought me on the road with him. We were, we had a show on VH1 and uh, it was a reality show. So I start doing stand up. He comes to see me in the belly room at the comedy store. And he, I go, it's a one woman show. It's not stand up. He goes, it's stand up, stupid. So we go on the road cause he's charming. And um, are you dating him at this point? No, we just broken up. Oh, we just broken up. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But we, it, our breakup was like 
cool, right? Like we literally pounded it like, yeah, yeah. it's over. You yeah. know, we were just, but we didn't have any animosity toward one another, no right. hatred. It was so easy. And then I started. And that was after what, what like people. seven years you guys were together? Five years. Five years? Five. It just feels like seven. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> I torture him. We were just making videos upstairs and I'm like, I got to go do a podcast. He's like, I'll do it. I'm like, no, you'll do oh, it by you yourself. Him another on for time. five minutes. I could have gotten a story <laughs> out of him. Oh, he's out of control. Yeah. He goes, no, then it'll be all about me. So you go do it because yeah. I don't want it to make it all about me. Yeah. He, he knows he's a narcissist and he can't, right, right. <laughs> he can't control it. Yeah. So, but no, he's like one of my best friends. So he took me on the road and he's like, don't worry, they're going to love you. And I'm three months into stand up in front of a dice crowd. It, we did uh, in the, on the West coast, California. It was great. They loved me. They're like, Eleanor. I'm like, okay, I got away with it. So now so if you haven't done that reality show. I can tell you firsthand because I know uh, Lenny Clark used to open for him sometimes oh, on the road. Lenny's the best. And apparently favorite. like one time they were doing, uh, a stadium, like a fucking stadium. <laughs> and they got a story there, and there was, do you know the story? And there's cameras on them and, uh, and Lenny gets up and they're just booing them and they just want dice and they're chanting dice. And, you know, uh, you know, Lenny doesn't give a shit. He's a boss nope. comic. He's seen, the he's best. seen worse. So Lenny he apparently clack. like took off his shoes and socks and started clipping his toenails and they showed it on the big screen. You just saw these nasty. Is that the way you heard the story? Absolutely. <laughs> Andrew will tell the story. He loved it. And he let it go on longer because Andrew loves that shit. Yeah. He doesn't like that. The crowd didn't give the openers a thing, yeah. you know, give them. The, so, so California is very nice people, right? Yeah. Now we go to New York. I'm still this new comic. Right. I barely have eight minutes. I mean, barely. So the fact that you go up in front of a dice crowd is now you're a sacrifice. They're looking right. at you like, oh, is this for us? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And they're ready. to. I'm in New York. We're at the Westbury Music Fair. Theater, in, theater the in the round. round. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. And Andrew was like, you got to dress up more on stage. Like wear the high boots and the short shorts, show your tough attitude. Uh -huh. I'm like, what? I'm showing my clip. Like, no, I didn't. Yeah. I don't want to wear a short shorts. It feels uncomfortable, but I did it. Cause I figured he knows something about costuming. Uh -huh. yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we go, I do it and I'm out on, st it's packed. And I'm like, okay, this is nerve wracking. My sister, Karen, drove up from Philly. I see her in the audience. I'm excited. I go out. It's, you know, it's a big thing for me. I'm nervous, but I say, I'm from Philly. They go, boo, fuck the Phillies, fuck the Eagles. And I'm like, you motherfucker. Now I start sweating, right? Yeah. I'm trying to do my act. I'm, you know, pushing. All you hear is, where's Dice? And I, oh, last thing I remember saying is, He's up my ass. You want to tickle his feet because my brain <laughs> goes to, I'm going to fight this whole fucking yeah. room, you know, yeah. like, so I'm trying to calm down, be professional. Yeah. I'm still saying, you know, anyway, on Thanksgiving or whatever, yeah. you know, and I, there's now it's getting louder. Dice, dice, oh. dice, dice. And they're boom, yeah. boom. And they're and you're hard spinning boom. and you're rotating this entire yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the you're on a rotisserie stick. Yeah. I'm sweating. My cute little half bra slid down under my shirt. Now I have tumors <laughs> on my stomach. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't know what words I was saying. The thing that brought me back to reality was catching eyes with my sister, Karen. And she stood up and went, what do you want to do? We'll fight this whole fucking room. All I saw were her arms. And I was like, oh shit, I better close it or she's going to start hitting people in that section. Like, I, I just thought the headlines would read two Irish girls from South Philly tried to fight Long Island. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, right. So I calmed me down. I got off stage, took the booing, took the beating, if you will, yeah. pulled my bra back up. And Andrew was like, I'm not going out there. Fuck them. They should give me the respect. I'm like, Andrew, they don't want me. They want you. Yeah. They don't care about me. And so I, I go, he went out. He had one of the best sets ever. And <laughs> he later, it was my space times. Uh -huh. So somebody sent him a clip of me getting booed. 
Yeah. And he put it on MySpace. He was like, I tell people it's hard to open for me, but look at that. I go, why don't you put it <laughs> out there? You fucking idiot. Because I just wanted to show them what yeah. animals they are. I go, no, it shows how bad I am. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. But it was, uh, I did, it that. was the worst experience and I the did best that room. And it's, and it's a big fucking theater and, oh, yeah. you know, it's got to hold like 7,000 people or something. And, yeah. And uh, I think and, we only had the, bo- yeah. And so it's rotating and I was opening up for uh, Grand Funk Railroad and I'm like, no. Grand Funk Railroad, they're still touring. And I'm like, all right, I don't know if they'll have a crowd. So I get there and uh, and I, I haven't been doing it that long, but I get out there and, you know, there's no backstage because it's theater no. around. So you have to walk down the stairs yep. to the stage. And so they're like and so the, the whole audience is fucking old because they're old classic rock fans. Yeah. And they're wearing jean jackets with the Doors logo on the back, but they have gray okay. hair. And, right. You know, Long guys gray with, hair. Yeah. Bandanas, like balding with bandanas, but a ponytail, that kind of look. And, you know, chains on their wallets. And and so, so good. So they go, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, before we bring on Grand Funk Railroad, here's your opening act. What the fuck? <laughs> fuck that. Like I haven't, they haven't even said my, wow, they are booing. And I, I, I fucking walk down the stairs to the stage and people are heckling me and I'm trying to like go back at them, but it's dark and I'm spinning. So I don't know who to yell at because now I'm eight degrees to the left of where I was. And then and so they start screaming. I finally went, I said, Hey, wait a minute. I know you guys all have to get your grant, your, your mother's station wagon home by 11 o'clock. Cause you're living in the basement. And I start. Oh my God. And I kind of got like half of them. Some of them. All you need. If you just get some of them, then at least they're in on the joke. Yeah. And and so I kind of got out with my head up high and, uh, and I watched Grand Funk Railroad (laughs) and you know what? They were fucking great. Really? I never even We're an American band. Oh, okay. I know this song. We'll help you part it down. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, they'll help you party down. Thank you. Thank you for that. I need a help party down. Uh, that's incredible. Yeah, I never heard of them. But that, I, the fact that people don't even give you the chance. Yeah. Is, it, it says a lot about the band. Like, that's how good the band is. Like, I mean, it says yeah. a lot about Dice. They, they don't want to see you. They paid yeah. a heavy ticket price. They got, uh, you know, they're like, oh, I wonder who's opening. No one gives a fuck. They, right. We are always a sacrifice, right. especially a Dice. I didn't think I'd find a wilder, if you will, I'll use that word, um, caliber of people until I started working with Kid Rock. And then I was like, oh, wow, there's another level. Really? <laughs> it was that sacrificial also, or was it some kind it of was in, It was just, they were just wild. They were yeah. just rowdy, loud. I mean, I was on his boat. I did it at a Kid Rock. Um, uh, he does a, a cruise. Yeah. So uh, I kept saying boat because he kept screaming, we're on a boat, motherfucker. You know, and the yeah. crowd just goes crazy. Uh, well, I'm on stage and somebody, go, somebody just goes, yo, do you used to fuck dice? And I was like, wow, that's, I was in the middle of a bit. <laughs> this isn't the bit I wrote. And, and I'm like, yes, I did. And then the lady, another lady goes, who was his wife? He got a big day. I'm like, what's happening right now? <laughs> like, it was insane. And, and, I, and I had to win them over, but them yeah. I won over luckily. Cause it's years later. It took so Andrew, after I bombed at Westbury Music Fair, uh, then we went to the State Theater in Jersey the next night, and I uh-huh. got booed again. Yeah. But so did the other opening act. So I was like, oh, thank God, not just yeah. me. Yeah. And I had more family there, so they were even angrier. And they You're were right. like, what the fuck is going You're on? Right. And I'm like, no, no, guys, this is normal now. Um, do you think <laughs> this is how it that, goes. Do you think that those kinds of shows are good for your act or bad for your act? Um, well, I was three months in, so it, in a good way for me that it happened, it humbled. It was like, don't get cocky, bitch. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, cause I was having good shows at the store and little clubs and doing well. And then I got in front of a real audience kind of a thing. That's not a real audience. I, you're right. But you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. To an extent. And so 
it was like a humbling, like, Hey, come. And then Andrew for a year, he didn't book me. He uh-huh. said, I want to see if you really want to do this right. because it hurt him when they got mean to me Yeah, as, you know, as family kind of a thing. He was like, don't no, I'm not going to let she's, you know, she's my family. You can't boo her. Yeah. I'm not going to, I'm going to, this is not going to be good. Like he was going to not perform that night. I was like, what are you right. crazy? Um, so I get it on his, but then it made me go and work even harder Yeah, to never get that feeling again of being booed, not just by right. his crowd, by any crowd. Right. Cause then you do bar shows, bar shows are terrible. I just did one. <laughs> In, I went to South by Southwest. Oh, is this the uh, Lit Lounge show? Because Adam Egan, <laughs> I was just texting with Adam Egan, and I said, uh, I said, Eleanor is coming on the podcast. What should I ask her? And he goes, ask her about Lit Lounge and the pizza eating competition. I fucking hate his guts. <laughs> Adam, you're trash. No, first he said, what should I ask her? And he goes, when did she quit? When did she quit doing stand up comedy? <laughs> <laughs> Adam's one of my favorite people on the planet. Yeah. And so we're at this bar show. It's me and Punky Johnson and a couple other, her, her opener, Dicey, who's also a very funny comic. And so I was like, I felt comfortable because it's like comedy store people you see, yeah. right? So you're like, oh, okay, we're all just fucked up gig, you know? And Punky goes on and nobody's listening to her and she's just saying whatever she's saying. And I'm like, oh, this is going to be real bad. This is going to be real bad. Yeah. And then I go on. And unbeknownst to me, Adam is outside watching and yeah. I am bombing horrendously, <laughs> horrendously. I mean, even Punky's not listening to me. In <laughs> fact, she's not listening to me so hard. She brought a pizza in and shared it with everybody in front of the stage. <laughs> oh, that's Y'all amazing. Want Y'all want pizza? I'm like, Punky. <laughs> And she was like, oh, go ahead. I'll do your thing. I'm like, no, bitch. Was it Adam's a- outside dying, laughing. So what was it like a bar? It was a bar show. It was you walk in one of those worst bar shows where you walk in and the stage is right there. Yeah. So you have to walk through the act, right. you know? Right. So he, the, the, the booker He's a nice guy from L.A. And he goes, come on, come on, come in. And I go, no, the guy's on stage. I'll wait. He goes, oh, it doesn't matter. And I was like, no, it does. No, it really does. You yeah. know? And so then we just literally walked through. I mean, I had to step on half the stage. Yeah. I was like, hey, sorry, buddy. I'm up two more, but I'm going to go. You know, I didn't even know the poor guy that was on yeah. stage. Sorry, he just sir, stopped and looked. Yeah. I'm, a big <laughs> I'm being deal. walked in. I'm with the booker. Yeah. This is the booker, you know? <laughs> and then Joe DeRosa had an idea that we could stream having like a pizza eating contest. (laughs) And so the guy, Charlie, that books uh, South by was like, Hey, would you be interested in this? Joe thought it would be, you would be great for it. I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty much human slaw. Yeah. Big fat slob. I'll eat pizza. (laughs) Yeah. My cholesterol is a little high, but yeah, let's throw some sausage and pepperoni on it too. You know, right. it's Texas. let's get I'm some sure fatty meat. Good, right? Yeah, pizza. I'm sure they use salsa as sauce, right. and right. I can't wait to eat this. So I'm thinking I'm just going to mock it and fuck around with Joe DeRosa. So I said, yeah, sure, I'll do it. And then uh, Adam, we were hanging out after my bombing, and I go, Adam, I gotta go. I gotta get up early for a PT and contest. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he was like you so gonna... you're at south by for all the big shows i go absolutely yeah, yeah. i, I mean lit say, you, you picture yourself showing up and going on stage <laughs> after the fucking black crows yeah uh, oh did you watch the film now it's my turn you know like yeah all these big directors musicians yeah, right, everybody's right. there and i'm i'm eating fucking fatty meats on salsa Let me ask and you cheese. This. Speaking of shows like this, have you ever not finished a set? Have you ever walked off? No. Neither have I. Never. And, I and there has been when times I, when I need it to. Yeah. Well, no, <laughs> but you did it. That's the thing. Yeah. I walked off once because somebody threw an apple at me and hit me in the chest at an outdoor show opening for They Might Be Giants and I walked off. That's the only time because I felt physically in danger. But okay. otherwise, in 32 years, 32 fucking years. That's incredible. Never walked off. 
And that says something about you that you never with the you've done tougher shows than I have in my life and you always finish them. I mean, that's yeah. something you got to really take in. That's like that is something that most people in their jobs, when it comes to a high stress, high pressure situation <laughs> where things are going horribly wrong, it's exponentially worse in stand up comedy. And people, yeah. People quit all the time. They have meltdowns. They walk out. They take a break. And and you fucking finished every one of those shows. There was a show in Northern California when I first was opening for Dice. It was the second time in a big place with a thousand people and the the sound system went out. Yeah. So I'm on stage like. Uh -huh. And Andrew goes, get off the stage. And I was like, oh, and I was trying to calm them down. And then I did. I got off the stage. I had just walked out. And the sound yeah. went out yeah. and Andrew goes, get off the stage. So I went to the side. I go, what do we do? Should I go calm him down or what? He goes, you don't have a mic. You can't. Yeah. So uh, they're going to try to make an announcement or have somebody run up and tell them. Cause it was like a straight up, it looked like a sliding board. It was straight up. It was, yeah. it was a parking lot one day and then they built a stage for dice, you know? Right. So we were out in the middle of nowhere. And, um, so we're doing it. And the guy goes, I go, how long is it going to take? And he goes, I don't know. And then an hour later, oh. Andrew said, if you don't want to go out there, you don't have to, because they're going to be, they're wasted. Yeah. They're gone. And yeah. they wait it. They did not leave. They wait uh -huh. it. Cause everybody went and told them what was going on and they wait it. Yeah. So they've been drinking this whole time. You're only doing stand up three months. You have eight minutes. This is going to be tough. And I have always have a picture of in my pocket of Freddie Soto. I don't know if you know Freddie Soto. Yeah, yeah, but, of course. God rest okay, in he, peace. He was my very closest, my best yeah. friend and oh, really? passed away. Oh. Yeah. So I always keep Freddie's picture in my pocket. Yeah. And I took it out and I go, no, I'm going to go on, you know, I'm going to go on. And Andrew goes, okay. Yeah. And I'm rubbing the picture and I'm, and his other, there was another opener. That's why he was saying I didn't have to go on. So wheels was with me. I was opening wheels was featuring and I'm rubbing Freddie's picture and wheels came up behind me and goes, even he can't help you now. <laughs> <laughs> and I just put Freddie back in my pocket and I went out there and I had a great set. I had a fun you time. Did. Andrew. Yeah. Andrew had a drink thrown at him. A girl was so wasted, oh, a no purse shit. thrown at him. Really? And it just made his set even longer. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah. was like, I'm going to stay up here longer. Damn. Yeah, it was crazy. It was fun, though. That's <laughs> Poor Freddie. I depend on Freddie for a lot of things. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> Insane. Um, so, what's the um, here's a question I've been, I have a few questions that I've been asking all my comedian guests to answer. Oh, no. What is. The hackiest bit you ever did. I think they're all hacky. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, you're not a hack. No, I'm you're kidding. I'm kidding. But what's um, the bit that you did that you look back on and you go, oh my God, what was I fucking thinking? God, I can't think. I love them all so much. <laughs> um <laughs> uh no i don't know some yeah yeah that's a tough that's a tough question it's a hard question i hate it yeah because now i'm like i guess for that no now i'm like damn is that a hacky joke like it, I, you know sometimes i'll say i went to catholic school all i learned about myself is i'm easy <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's kind of hack in that yeah, yeah I, they get it irish girl i mean yeah. irish girl, catholic girls are easy uh, -huh. uh so i guess that i'll put that all one right. up there all right <laughs> I'll put that in the book. Um, who do you want to give your eulogy when you die? Oh. Well, it's not going to be dice because Eleanor, I don't do death. And oh, he, <laughs> he doesn't do, do that. No, he doesn't do it. He yeah. doesn't find it funny. He can't uh, find the humor in it. Yeah. Actually, it should be him. Yeah. It should be forced to be him yeah. so that he's forced to deal with it. Yeah, I'm sure he'll be long gone. But anyway, um, I like that. I, I like that. I, I think yeah. that you sh and I think you should tell him that now say, oh, you know, there's going to come a day and I will die before you because I feel like yes. he's indestructible. And, and he right, that was one here. of the names of his uh, specials. Oh, really? Yeah. Indestructible. Yeah. They spelled um, it wrong on the T-shirt. Anyway, go ahead. On purpose? 
I don't know. <laughs> it wasn't him. It was somebody else. <laughs> it just made it look better that it was. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, but, and the, the, here's the last question. Have you ever borrowed a lot of money or lent a lot of money to somebody? Um, I remember I always had jobs. Cause like I said, how I grew up, I started working in like fourth grade Yeah, and, um, I was a lifeguard. So I was making decent money and I was 16 years old. And, uh, my, one of my friends, a guy friend of mine knocked up a girl and I had to pay for the abortion. Oh, I was 16. Damn. So it was a lot of money to me then, but it's, you know, it was like, did you know the girl? Bucks. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What's and her, her parents, <laughs> Italian Catholics, they would lose their mind. The yeah. immigrant off the boat, they right. would lose their mind if they knew probably. So right. I'm sure right. it's one of her deepest, darkest secrets. Wow. Um, That's worth the money she spent. never had children. No. And I don't think it was for lack of trying. I think she just never, I don't know. Isn't that weird? Yeah, that is weird. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, guys, you're welcome. I saved you from overpopulating the planet even more, even though my mother has single handedly destroyed. Yeah, it. that might be your mission. I think that each of you, and my your mom and her sister, are like for this at least when one the world abortion, <laughs> just to make up for what your mother did. <laughs> <laughs> my mom and my aunt joy are just like woo woo yeah, world yeah. is too many people woo woo <laughs> it's the best um <laughs> and then um i wanted to also ask you before we go i could talk to you all day but i want to ask you about i love you your days That's at the it. comedy store as a waitress who were okay. who was on the staff of the club when you were a waitress that's now a comedian um as a waitress, none. No, like because, door guys and stuff. Oh, door guys, yeah. They were all um, like Jordy Fox. You know Jordy Fox? Yeah. Okay, but he doesn't do stand-up as much anymore, but Jordy Fox was there. You know, Bobby Lee. Uh-huh. That piece of shit. And, um, <laughs> you know, we had a battle when we were working together, and we didn't talk for 20 years. No. No, really bad. Really Are you bad. serious? Mm -hmm. what was the fight over so that little piece of shit no. and now you got to remember we're young we're working yeah. you know um mitzi and i were very close uh -huh. um bobby was just this young comic now i'm not a comic at this point i never did stand up when i yeah. waited tables at the store so i um i'm just waiting tables i care about my waitresses i work for them you know i make sure they have everything that they want the, we hired, Polly hired, Polly Shore hired this guy to run the club. He was an older Asian guy that ran it in the eighties. That was, Polly was basically hiring this guy to take over because Mitzi's health was declining. So he was old school. He was wild. He came in. If a comic came, like say you were doing a set and your spot was at 10, 15 and you showed up at 10, 20 because you had another spot. He would send you home. A comic. Okay. Yeah. That's crazy. Like yeah. Mitzi would never do that. Right. Right. Like now you've crossed the line. So he kept, he was trying to make the girl, the, the waitresses militant. And I went right to him and I go, you can't, this is not how this place works. Yeah. You have to calm down. And he was coming around with me talking to him. The door guys didn't have a spokesperson. They were comics. Mitzi used to get rid of them every three months anyway. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? So th she was paying them $25 a shift. Yeah. They didn't make money. We made money. They uh -huh. made no money. Yeah. So uh, Bobby was upset because the guy took away their stage time, which is a big deal to them. And I get it. So I felt bad. And I said, okay, I will talk to Mitzi and him on your behalf. And every, it was another, a bunch of other comics that don't do it anymore um, th that we're all involved in this and we all got together and I said, all right, I'm going to go to Mitzi. And Paulie was like, he went to Bobby Lee and he goes, dude, that guy's going to help me, dude. You can't go against him. Right. And Bobby was like, anything for you, Paulie. Uh, and he turned on everybody. Oh, and I go, you little shit, you get me involved. You get me to go. Now I'm in a fight with Polly. Now uh, we are fighting heavily, crazy. Yeah, he yeah. hates me. Uh -huh. And I'm like, I go, I'm not 
this is just a fucking waitressing job. What are you doing? This isn't what I'm here for, but I have to pay rent till I can become Meryl Streep. Meanwhile, yeah. they didn't let me do that either. So I was like, I just need to what I just need to pay bills. I don't want to get this headache. And Bobby just fucked everybody. And then that guy stayed and it got worse and worse and worse. And then we finally got rid of that guy. Wow. And Mitzi finally had a, a moment of clarity. But uh-huh. I just didn't talk to him. I go, he's toxic. He's just one of those climbers. He just and he still is. And no, I'm just kidding. But we, <laughs> we, we hashed it out yeah. on, a, on, on the comedy store podcast, which I do with Rick and his podcast. But when I started doing stand up 15 years ago, he went to the then booker, Tommy, and he was like, if you pass Eleanor, I'll never come in here again. No, and I'm like, shit. oh, this bitch is still petty. Really? Awesome. I would treat him like he wasn't there. Like yeah. to, he, like I didn't hate him. I was just like he don't exist. Yeah, he doesn't understand the Irish and how we shut down and just you're not even there. You could be dancing. Right. I don't see anything. Right. right. So we, how did we, you get living? How did you get passed in? Did Bobby uh, not have well, the juice he thought he had? He he did it because all the other comics went and said, "What are you fucking crazy? You know she's Eleanor and she's killing. Uh-huh. She's actually a funny." female comic you need you need female comics yeah but you could also enjoy having a funny female comic you know right. and um it was more people that were for than the one person that was against damn so how long ago did you guys make amends <laughs> oh it was only a couple of years ago really <laughs> yeah so so uh mitzi used to let me host uh uh tommy used to let me host potluck i, I shouldn't say mitzi because she was very sick at this point yeah. she wasn't really making the decisions tommy was making all the decisions so i they would let me host a lot you know so now i'm hosting and um bobby lee pops in he wants to work out and at the time him and ari shafir were still fighting <clears throat> so ari was there and i went to ari and i like, fuck i gotta bring up bobby I go, he goes, just, just be professional. You'll be fine. Uh-huh. So I go, okay. So, cause now I'm being, I'm not being nice. Cause I don't go by, I, he still doesn't exist, but yeah. I get that he works there. Yeah. So I know how to do that. So I bring him up and I say all these positive things. I mean, I went overboard. I yeah. probably gave every credit he ever had. Uh, yeah. And, and I go, give it up for the great Bobby Lee. And Bobby goes on what the fuck? Like, you know, he goes to the microphone. Okay. And it took him a minute to even get started because yeah. he was so thrown off. And I go back to Ari. I go, what, what did you think? He goes, you didn't have to go that far. Uh-huh. <laughs> I was like, Ari, <laughs> you told me. To be I, he goes, you didn't have to take it that far. Like he was yeah. mad that I gave him all those accolades. Yeah, I was like, yeah. But he did all those things, you know? Uh-huh. So I would never take away that he was funny, right. but Bobby, was this is i didn't know you know how insecure he was is was whatever and he thought that like me and freddie soto were literally teaming up to get him kicked out of the comedy store and basically shut down in hollywood and i'm like i'm a waitress yeah like, right really you gave right. me that kind of power you think i could go to mitzi shore and say hey you probably shouldn't book bobby mm-hmm she throw me out of there. Yeah. You don't fuck with her comics. Mm-hmm. The only time I ever like said anything about comics is she would ask specifically, did so-and-so have their guitar? And I'd say yes, even if they didn't, because I knew she'd throw them out of there if they didn't have the uh, guitar. Okay, yeah. You know, or did Jackie Banana wear his jacket? Yeah, uh-huh. he wore it. He masturbated in it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Like I never, those were the only questions she would ask about right. comics yeah. if if someone did really well i would once in a while while i was with her say um oh my god so and so killed last night yeah. i mean the show was great overall but that's the thing that people don't understand about show business is that's actually where people move up up the ladder is when somebody like you who isn't an agent or a manager or a publicist or somebody is in the mm. ear of somebody that they trust because they know you have no agenda. And when when somebody like like that says something to somebody like Mitzi, that's that's when you can incrementally move up the ladder. It's very yeah. powerful. I mean, but 
you know, Bobby might have been paranoid for a reason, because if you did say maybe something- somebody did that to him, but I would yeah. never, ever. I watched people do it to her. Yeah. I watched people go to Mitzi with agendas, without whatever, and say nasty things. And she got rid of them. Yeah. Right. She, it, it didn't work that way for her. She was so backwards that the, the, when people would do that, it would like if somebody got in her ear saying this was bad, this wasn't working out, not for the comics, for something at the club, she would go for it for a little bit. And then she'd be like, oh, this person's fucking crazy and get rid of that person. We'd be like, oh, thank God. Yeah. But I would never go to her and go, hey, why are you listening to that lady? She's a psychopath. Right. You know, I, I, she had to figure it out. Yeah. Because if you did that, you were turning against her. Yeah. So I didn't do that. I would never try to hurt someone's livelihood. Yeah. There was two people I had a problem with at the comedy store in the 12 years that I waited tables there. Odd that they were both had the same name. Um, <laughs> Bobby Lee maybe. and... <laughs> Another Bobby, but he doesn't even matter because nobody knows. Really? But they, they were the only people I ever fought with yeah. at the comedy store. I yeah. never, I'm still friendly with old waitresses, old men. I fight. Sometimes old... I fight with Marin, but then I, but then he makes me laugh so much that I can't stay mad at him. You... Marin, can, I can see that. Marin can, yeah, he can push your he, buttons. Sometimes he can, he can push, push buttons. buttons. You know, uh, when he first came back to the store, I was like, "Oh, wow, you're back." He was like, "What do you mean I'm back?" And I was yeah. like, "Oh," and yeah. this is when I'm waiting tables. Yeah. So. And I was like, well, well, you were here in this time. He goes, I wasn't here. I was like, yeah, yeah, you were. I was waiting tables. I know. Like at the time when he came back, I was doing, I just started doing stand up ish. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, um, I would talk to him about, you know, he was like, oh, you're a stand up now. And I'm like, so you do remember me? Uh -huh. um, because he would pretend like he didn't remember yeah. me. Or, or maybe he was that fucked up. And I'm uh -huh. not an alcoholic so i don't know yeah i think he was an alcoholic right yeah uh i i don't speak to anybody's sobriety i know exactly that. i don't know exactly but i know he would hang out with certain people that yeah. did certain things so and he doesn't do those things no more yeah but that right. i would give him stuff so i know i gave him drinks i know yeah. it so yeah. i <laughs> i was That's like hilarious. yeah you don't remember me but i guess he partied that hard and now we talk about it and you joke about it yeah because it's a thing but um, everybody always, uh, said, Oh yeah, Mark, he's this, he's that, but he is a kind person. He is, he's he in has there. a big heart. He's a the guy. Yeah. But he's, mm -hmm. you know, all comics are crazy. We're all fucking crazy. He, exactly. Like he said uh, to me, uh, who's got eyes on Dom? <laughs> who's got eyes on Dom? What does that mean? He, like if he doesn't see him for a while, yeah. does anybody have eyes on that? Like he's, yeah. con that's caring. That's yeah, concerned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. nice. And I'm like, Mark, you have a telephone. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> you probably have it in your pocket. All right, well, you listen, know? I was going to plug your dates, but like a real yeah. fucking pro, you have no website. You literally don't have okay, a website. Okay, here's the thing. They're they're fixing it right now. Yes, I do. It's EJ, it's Eleanor J. Kerrigan, and it's on Wix. And these idiots, until I pay them $50 million, won't post it. But he said he put my dates on there. Ellenorjkerrigan.com. Right, I, I all I saw was you're going to be at Magoobies on May sixth and seventh. I yes, was just there. I, great club. Ooh, it is a great club. I'm trying to book a promote my Grand Rapids comedy club. Okay, one. and that's Dr. not Doctor Grins that, and no, Grand Rapids. Oh. That's, he closed. Oh, he did. It's, yes. Oh, that's such that's, a bummer. Yes, this is next weekend, the thirty first. Uh, the um, first and second. Oh, I don't know if this will be up by then. This won't be up then. Oh, uh, whatever. Damn it. Then plug Magoobies. Magoobies. Yeah. Magoobies. That's in May, right? Okay. Yeah. May 6th and 7th. And then check out. I have out a website. I'm sorry. It, it will be fixed when I get this guy by his throat. Because that's how the only do, way How do fix. people get your album? How do they buy the album? On the, oh, on the Lady website? Like. Ladylike is everywhere. Okay. Spotify, it's all over. Ladylike. Okay, check that Lady out. Ladylike. And you can see Eleanor at the Comedy Store. It seems like you're there every night of the week. So just go check out the lineup on their website and go see Eleanor. Fucking kill as she always does. Except for that one night, but yes. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I went. I meant to ask you about that. The last time I saw <laughs> you, <laughs> you, uh, you were on stage and you had a rough set. And... And I blame. I the never audience. blame the audience. No, no, I the, never blame the audience. I, I try not to blame the audience, but that, but everybody had a hard time that night. Everybody had a hard time. 
But they, what happened was that came in a series of me having that kind of trouble. Yeah. You know, yeah. when you, I don't know if this happens to you cause you're so good, but if you go through a little slump where either jokes aren't hitting, not old ones, but like newer ones. And you're just like, why isn't this work? What am I doing wrong? Yeah. And then like, it doesn't work at this club. It doesn't work at that club. Doesn't you do this show? It doesn't work. And then that Saturday was probably number five where uh-huh. I was like, okay, you got to go see Brody. Yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah, go, go sit, sit on the Brody. bench. Go sit on the bench for a little while. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's All get right. the news. You know, like I was there, I was there. That's well, what hopefully I was. The slump will be over when people come to see you. Um, Eleanor, thank you so much. I love you. Thank you for doing Love this. you more. Thank okay. you for having me. Now right. I have to go find room service for Dice, who keeps texting every five minutes. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. I'll see you soon. Love you. Thank you. Love you. Bye. Bye.